Good evening and welcome to the January 2nd, uh, 2024 City Council meeting. If you join me for a moment of silence from the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Orlovsky, roll call, please. Michelle Volk. Here. Luke Kellier. Here. John Bermel. Here. Dan Walter. Here. Joshua Lee. Here. Okay, very good. Moving on to item number three. This is opportunity for citizens' comments. We're up to three minutes. If there's an item that's not on the agenda that you'd like to share with the council, you can step forward, share your name and address. That would be most helpful. Uh, good evening. Good evening. My name is uh, John Ness, and I live at 19201 Jewel Path in Lakeville. And thanks for letting me uh, once again speak to you uh, about the proposed development at the 14-acre parcel at Kenwood Trails uh, Middle School. As you are all aware, I believe I sent a letter to Bill Burgess, the president of Minnesota Division of Lennar, on December 20th. And, and this was on behalf of 14 community members. And for the benefit of those here tonight and those perhaps listening uh, from home, I'll take a few minutes to summarize the main points of that letter. The letter spelled out that <clears throat> spelled out how ISD 194 failed to engage the community and key stakeholders before proceeding with the purchase agreement, so it was unaware of the current land use by the middle schools, the cross country runners, the Nordic skiers, and the community. The community is now engaged and is voicing its overwhelming opposition to this development to city staff and to, to all of you. Um, the letter went on to say that district's failure to engage with the stakeholders place, has placed Lennar in a very difficult position, no doubt, and we all know that Lennar is a well-respected developer and partner to the city. And it's my belief that they would have not entered into this agreement had they understood fully the impact uh, and the importance of this parcel to the community and the amount of opposition to the development. The letter closes by encouraging Lennar to abandon the development as allowed under the purchase agreement and by so doing, Lennar would demonstrate leadership and concern for the community's interest. It would be the right thing to do for Lennar, for ISD 194, for the city of Lakeville, and for the community. Now, all of you have received copies of the letter. Uh, several contributors to the letter are here that, uh, this evening, have joined me, and so we're here. If you have any questions about the letter, uh, we can take a few moments. Okay, seeing none. Um, so in the remaining few minutes, until Luke kicks me off, um, <laughs> I'm pleased to report the community is engaged uh, and the opposition to this development continues to grow. Our Facebook group is now at 762 members, a petition from a Lakeville uh, student athlete asking for the school board to reverse the sale and protect the land sale has now received 389 signatures. A second petition by a Lakeville resident asking authorities uh, defined loosely to protect the trails, wetland, and wildlife habitat has received 515 signatures. We plan to continue to meet, and we have, uh, we're have we gonna be setting up an Instagram account in the coming weeks. So thank you for your time. Thanks, John. Any other citizen comments? Okay, uh, moving on to item number four, additional agenda information, Mr. Miller. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Okay, moving on to presentations and introductions, and I'll turn over to our Fire Chief, um, Mike Meyer for uh, fire department retiree recognition. Give me just one second. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Thank you for letting us uh, present shadow boxes to two of our retirees this evening. If I can ask uh, Tabor Aiken and Steve Galinsky to join me up here. Both Tabor and Steve joined the department together in 2002 where they served 21 plus years on the department. Uh, Tabor and Steve both started at station two and then uh, kind of went their separate ways if you will where Steve moved to station four when that opened in 2003 and uh, Tabor finished his career at station three. Uh, both of them held 
kind of follow the same paths as they came in together, but firefighter, they hold the positions of firefighter, engineer, lieutenant, captain, and finished, uh, I will say finished as district chiefs, but at the end of their terms, they step back down and serve the remaining uh, time as firefighters, mentoring those above them and around them as far as leaders. Uh, some of the things that they did during their tenure on the department, uh, their leadership helped improve the department's operations by uh, helping develop our duty crew program, our drone team, uh, station staffing coverage during COVID. Uh, and then they were the first to go through instant command certification that we uh, went through as a department or as chief officers. And I'm not gonna say much more, I'll let them uh, kind of convey their story, but I wanna thank Tabor and Steve for their leadership, years of service at the department, their friendship and uh, mentorship to me as a chief. And most importantly, I wanna thank their families for all the support that they gave Tabor and Steve to be part of our community as, as firefighters and serving our community. One of you want to go first? I'm going first. <laughs> I retired. I have, he has the lower badge number, so I let him decide. And I retired first um, by about a month. So, a um, couple of notes here. So, I, um, so thank you, council members, mayor, uh, city administrator, uh, for letting us uh, speak here tonight and for this recognition and for our shadow boxes. We really appreciate them. First of all, I'd like to thank my parents who should be hopefully watching from their home in Florida online. Um, Joe and Arvella Glinski for showing me the meaning of hard work. They taught me how things work, how to build things and how to fix things. And most importantly, taught me the value of every human life, which I think is very important uh, in our society and very important in, in this career as a firefighter. Um, I joined the fire department for two reasons. One, <clears throat> we were new to the community. I had no family here and I wanted a way to be involved, and I think the, the only way you get things from your community is to give things to your community. So this was an opportunity for me to uh, be part of a team and really become a part of a very big family. Um, so I'd like to thank my family at Station 4. A lot of those guys and gals are behind us right now and here tonight. Um, but as District Chief, I also got to expand that family to all the stations which really meant a lot to me to be able to meet with, with all of them. Uh, Chief Paulson, I got to work with and all of his uh, men and women of the police department. As a district chief, we get to spend a lot more time with our police officers and we have a fabulous department. So thank you, Chief Paulson and your staff. Um, there's two families that really went uh, kind of above and beyond in, in my career. And it's because my family and their family kind of got to be friends. Our, my wife and my kids, their kids. Um, so uh, Steve Meyer, Station 4 firefighter, and his wife Carmen um, were uh, very helpful and supportive to me as a firefighter, as a chief, um, and just we vacationed together. Our kids grew up in the high school together, and I appreciate um, them and all they did for them. Um, <clears throat> during rookie class, um, we were looking for a new house in Lakeville. We lived on the north side. We needed to move so the kids could be in Lakeville schools. My wife told me about some houses, went to training, and one of the other firefighters said, yeah, I think that house is in my backyard. <laughs> and of course, it had to be in the two mile radius so of, of station four, because I didn't want to change stations. Um, so turned out to be uh, a family, John Muma, a retired firefighter, and his wife, Tovi. Um, we raised our families together, and it went to, if it wasn't for the fire department, I would not have my, my brother from another mo mother. Mr. Muma. So thank you, John. Trying to make it brief, four firefighters that greatly impacted my career, retired firefighter Greg Stomas, who's here tonight. He was my first captain at Station 4. Um, he served, he taught me to be calm. I'm not a calm person. Everybody <laughs> will find that. But Greg was always calm. And he was, that was the biggest influence on me and really helped me settle down and, and get into this career. Um, uh, former LFD firefighter, current St. Paul firefighter and paramedic Chris Horniak um, was my ambassador of firefighter knowledge. The guy is a machine. He, he loves this craft and he taught me so much from the first call we had it was a garbage truck fire and I was so impressed with him and learned so much from him. Best paramedic I've ever met in my life and thanks to him for all he did. Fire Marshal Brian Carsonson, who's here as well tonight, he was my district chief when I came on and um, scared the, the Jesus out of me because he is 
so calm as well. <laughs> and it's, but I've learned so much from him. And as a district chief, he always took time to, as, as I went up the ranks, was always there for me to ask questions, to give advice in a very calm, mellow way. And then as we, um, as district chief, I learned so much about fire behavior, fire investigation. He always was there and willing to spend extra time to teach. So thank you, Brian. Um, one more person is this guy behind me, um, retired firefighter uh, and district chief Tabor Aiken. As you go up in the ranks, your peer group gets smaller and I would not have made it as a district chief without him, his partnership, his friendship. Um, it was just a great, great team effort. And I don't know, is this, does this thing work? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can, can we put that up there by any chance? All right, one other group to thank and introduce. So this picture was taken pretty much right after badging ceremony here. I think we went across the street. Ladder four is not here anymore. That's been replaced. My hair is not here anymore. <laughs> but luckily, all the other people in, this fam in the family are here. So my son, uh, you can please stand. I said, Connor, who's a lot taller than he was there. <laughs> and he's joined um, by his girlfriend, Lauren. Um, my daughter, Mariah, and her fiance, Jack, are with me tonight. And of course, my wife, Claudia, who um, I can't, <laughs> so I saved this to the end because I knew I might get a bit emotional, but um, she's been my rock. She's allowed me to do this for 21 years, um, and it wasn't easy on her, and um, I appreciate her letting me do this. So thank you very much. anymore, right? Many <laughs> of you know that I have the opportunity to serve as an elementary school principal in Lakeville, and I had the mistaken idea that I might get a minute or two today to put some notes together for tonight. So at around five o'clock or so, when the end of the day has closing out and uh, pulled the notepad out and, and put some things down, and uh, as Steve and I were sitting there chatting with each other before the presentation and the meeting, we had said, oh, I don't really have anything put together. Well, I'm going to define not having anything put together because uh, he's a terrible example of that as he's up here with his typewritten notes, and I have a bunch of chicken scratch on here. So I, uh, like him, want to give a shout out because I know I've got some family watching virtually, and of course my wife Beth is able to join me tonight uh, to be here for this uh, important event and uh, exciting opportunity. So uh, for me, uh, first off, I want to say thank you. Uh, because I appreciate the opportunity to do this work. Um, this is one of the reasons, one of the primary reasons we live in Lakeville is because I wanted to be a volunteer firefighter. And uh, my wife was patient and kind enough with me, as we said, McAndrews is going to be kind of our south boundary. We're not going to go any further than that. And we did. And uh, <laughs> we're very thankful. And then I've had the opportunity to uh, live and work in this community. And I, I love it. I love Lakeville. Uh, this is very much uh, home for me. I grew up on the East Coast, and but drifted out here, and this is home. And it just feels very much like the right place to be. So uh, being a firefighter and getting to do that work was also very important um, in fulfilling that place to, to be home. Um, I blame my dad. Uh, my father was a firefighter for 43 years. Uh, and uh, remember, and I've written and talked about it ad nauseum, but I remember running down to the bottom of the driveway when he would leave on a call and then in hopes that the call would take him back past the driveway so that I could see the big red truck go by. And, and uh, that was probably one of the other big motivators for Lakeville is that we have red fire trucks. And so that was uh, an important piece and an important thing to do. So um, as I, I talked a little bit about her, um, but Beth was sharing a memory the other day from Facebook, and we brainstormed a little bit this morning or this afternoon, and it was New Year's Day, and she had posted on Facebook that she was a little frustrated because I'd, been, I'd left on a call. Then I came home from the call only to leave again for another call, 
and then I, I think it had ended up to be three, three calls, and, uh, and then finally came home and said, start the grill, and we're gonna have some burgers. And so finally got caught up and got that done, but that's the, you know, the nature of the firefighter and the, and the work is that you're responding uh, to the community and supporting the community, whatever those needs might be. So I wanna give a big uh, shout out and a big thank you to Beth, because um, she's been with me this entire process. Uh, she has been a supporter. She's been a cheerleader. We've got multiple pictures of fire department events where it's Tabor and Beth. And she's just been with me the entire piece. She's been an amazing um, support, amazing voice. So for example, as simple as tonight, she said, you're probably gonna need to button your jacket because you got something on your shirt. So, <laughs> <laughs> calls that were just very, very difficult when I would come home and she'd say, how was that? And I'd say, I need a hug. And that's it. I don't want to talk about it, but I needed a hug. It was hard. And so, and she was always there for me. So Beth, thank you very much for your partnership and your support in doing this. I want to recognize uh, a group that's very important. And the group is Abijah on the backside. And Abijah is currently a partner with uh, the fire department and possibly the police department in providing uh, therapy for uh, firefighters, first responders, and others. I have had the fortune to avail myself of their services. They've been incredibly generous, made it almost impossible to say no. Um, I get to go back on the 15th. I was there before break and it's just, they're incredible and they're doing some amazing work. I counted the other day when I was there because there's two uh, therapists, an equine specialist and a therapist. There's a service dog that's there and then there's four horses. So I was like, I have about eight seven to eight beings taking care of me for an hour. This is amazing. And so uh, I have to give a shout out to Sally and her crew because that very unique approach to hanging out with horses in a barn has made an incredible difference for me um, and just been very therapeutic. Um, I think that uh, some of the people that I wanna recognize, uh, Todd Selner, Todd is reportedly out doing rookie training, but is he? We're not sure. <laughs> He's not here. Uh, and uh, Todd was always a, a step ahead of me in the fire department. Todd would tell you if he were here that he's still a step ahead of me. Uh, but he uh, was always a, a mentor for me, a guide. Um, and Todd was always there to give suggestions on how to do things. And as the men and women can attest, he's there to tell you not how to do or how not to do things as well. So. Um, uh, as Steve uh, identified, we don't, um, we are, you know, a small peer group that we get to work with, um, but we also don't really have partners, even though we don't do anything alone in the fire service, we do almost everything we do together. Um, and there was two opportunities when I got to have partnerships, and that was with Paul Miskimmon when Paul was the lieutenant and I was the captain at Station 2. The titles didn't matter, we were partners in co-leading and, and uh, facilitating the work that came out of that station. And then when I moved into the district chief role, uh, getting to be a, a partner with Steve. And I think that that one was uh, just very memorable because you're the only two people doing that work. When you're a firefighter, you're along other firefighters. When you're a station officer, there's other station officers. And in our system, when you're a district chief, there's one other district chief. So I would frequently refer to Steve as my partner and very much was that um, situation where we were constantly in communication, uh, constantly, uh, as using each other as sounding boards. And then in both cases with Paul and Steve, we were a good balance. We, uh, I believe we were. They might tell you that I was just riding their coattails, but <laughs> I believe that we uh, offset each other with our skills and uh, strengths and areas for growth. So, and then I wanna conclude by uh, celebrating Chief Meyer. Uh, as Mike indicated in his piece, um, there are a number of uh, assets, number of facets to our relationship of course, he was my, my boss and he's the formal, uh, the leader, the fire chief. However, he was also a friend, um, a supporter, somebody that encouraged taking risks and trying something new um, and uh, was frequent to offer opportunity to try things, but also frequent to collect feedback and, and work to grow right alongside us. So I greatly appreciate his leadership and uh, the opportunities that he facilitated and extended to me. And with that, I'm done. Thank you.
So you notice that they both have different styles to their shadow boxes. Mm -hmm. so the, the one piece that we used to kind of have a set, this was a shadow box, and then as we grow our system with the shadow boxes, uh, the question that I continually ask them is, you know, your shadow box represents your years of service, but ultimately when you bring it home, what's your significant other gonna let you put on the wall? <laughs> <laughs> so I usually connect them with a person on our department that makes them for them, and then they develop the shadow box as far as what they want it to look like. So why one's a different color than the other is that they work with, uh, like I said, one of our firefighters that builds them, and, and that's how they come about. Uh, if you want any questions about that, so. One of the unique things that Steve did with his is that uh, both of them were part of our drone program, but Steve uh, put a little drone emblem in his. Uh, so that's one unique thing, but uh, they all represent their badges or their service as far as from firefighter to them and all the way up to district chief and back down to firefighter again. So thank you for the time to uh, allow them to have a little conversation with you about their career and uh, letting us have time to, to present that the shadow boxes to them. Thank you, Chief. Council comments? Yes, John. Yeah, I just, uh, Steve and Tabor, just want to say congratulations. Um, I don't want it to be lost on anyone, uh, the length of your service. 21 years in a uh, profession that is physically, mentally, and emotionally grinding. Uh, and uh, that's, a, that's a huge commitment to our community. So I'm, uh, I'm proud of you, proud of our fire department. Um, those shadow boxes are nice, but that's just a really small token of the amount of gratitude this community has for your service. Well, I, I just want to extend uh, thanks on behalf of the community. You, both of you retired is going to be a huge loss for our department, and so we're just so thankful for your years of service and mentorship to the people coming behind you. You both mentioned uh, calm and partnership, and I'll tell you, I remember when we had a fire at our house when you were both there. Um, seeing both those things work uh and so just personally just grateful for for that so again thank you so much for your service and we'll let you guys take a picture or stick around it's totally up to you but thanks again thank you thank you <laughs> okay, we'll move on to item 5B, our public works quarterly report, and turn it over to our public works director, Mr. Omi. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members. Uh, this is a fourth quarter report for uh, public works. So I'd like to see. Just start out on some of the three projects that uh, we worked on last year um, from our third quarter report. After our third quarter report, uh, we did open up 185th Street, a new section from Dodd Boulevard to Highview Avenue um, early November. Uh, it was a little bit later than anticipated just due to some, some weather on conditions, but opened it up nonetheless. It's a great connection now to Highview and uh, nice uh, east-west collector for the city. Uh, there's still a little bit of restoration left uh, to do in the spring, but overall it's been a uh, very successful project. Looking forward uh, to this summer, we, in the next project we're um, planning on is Dodd Boulevard, the reconstruction from Cedar Avenue to Pilot Knob Road. This, again, this is a county road, but eventually it'll be turned over to the city for future operations and maintenance. Scheduled in this project, uh, we're anticipating opening bids in the end of January. We'll have a tree removal contract, um, contractor ready to go in February and, and uh, out to April sometime. And then after road restrictions, start the project right away. And this, will, this project will take all summer to complete and, and widen. Um, this graph shows the miles and the number of miles that the city has um, added to the system due to new developments over the years in 2023. Uh, this last year, we added an, almost four miles, which is down uh, from the last couple of years just due to the growth in the community. Um, moving on to the street division, uh, we did have seven call-outs this year, um, so far from October to end of, end of the, uh, 2023. 
Uh, same as 2022, but uh, 2023, obviously, we've had a lot of less snow and ice, but uh, the call-outs that we have had are, are more ice-related, so we have used a significant less salt than we did in 2022. Um, yeah. And our street, op street operations uh, went well this fall. We completed all our street uh, sweeping, uh, a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, patching went really well. We were able to, with the um, warmer weather that we've had, we, uh, do some inspections on our culverts and plan for some future re repairs and replacements with some of those culverts. And then uh, we got a good start on some tree removals and tree trimming um, that we were planning on for this winter as well. Moving on to the ADA transition plan, just a little update here. Uh, this is uh, the council adopted the plan about three years ago, and we're making some good um, strides to replace all the, the significantly deteriorated or out of compliant uh, uh, ramps. Those are the ramps that, that don't meet the uh, federal or state guidelines right now. So we are down to about 66 um, ramps that uh, still have to be replaced. Uh, we are anticipating about replacing about 40 of those ramps next summer with other projects that we have scheduled and we'll replace the rest of the ramps um, by 2028. Um, we did inspect uh, our street system again this fall um, and uh, are over our pavement conditions. So that's that's been completed um, and we are meeting our goals of uh, having our overall condition of our street system in, in the 70s. Moving on to the utility department, uh, we did have a record uh, water production year this year. We did pump uh, or produce over 3 um, billion gallons of water this year. It's about 5 a little over 5% more than we uh, produced last year. And that can be attributed to the, uh, the warmer conditions that we had or the, the hot, dry summer that we had and the new developments that came into town. Um, for sewer maintenance, we did jet uh, 71 miles of, of sewers this year, um, meeting our goal there. Uh, we did line uh, 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 13,700 feet of, of clay pipe. Um, when it meeting our I and I um, projections and our our uh, goals there, and then we did re rehabilitate one lift station, which was in our CIP uh, lift station 16. Moving on to the environmental resources division, so I just wanted to highlight a few of uh, the water quality improvement projects that we completed this year. Orchard Lake uh, hydrodynamic separator. This is a stormwater improvement. Um, system that uh, re uh, removes a, a lot of the sediment and uh, pollutants and floatable materials out of the water before it ends up in our lakes and the streams that was over on Orchard Lake. Middle Creek uh, stream restoration, this was a section of, of a stream that was highly eroded, uh, deteriorated, and um, we, we re realigned that, that, uh, that creek a little bit and restored it, um, and, uh, and so it doesn't erode as much anymore. This is the last phase of a three-year project and we've uh, completed um, this. This is the last phase of that of that of that project. So um, we are done with uh, two miles of stream re restoration on the Middle Creek area. Uh, Foxborough Park stormwater improvements uh, that we uh, constructed a pond there to treat some of the runoff uh, in that neighborhood, about 220 acres, before it ends up in North Creek. Uh, that was a, a nice project. Um, it will help wa again water quality and then some hopefully help a little flood mitigation as well. And then the East Lake uh, Carp Barrier Project, this is uh, to help prevent carp from going upstream into East Lake, which will help reduce the phosphorus loading in the lake as well. In all, all these projects, um, we, um, about $1.4 million worth of grant funds help pay for, for, for all these projects. <coughs> Um, water conservation, uh, we did receive a grant from Met Council. Um, we did have five HOA audits. We helped the three HOAs um, improve their uh, irrigation system. And then with that money, we also had some money left over to improve some of our, our own irrigation system at the water treatment plant, uh, fire station four and city hall as well. And we're, by some of these uh, improvements, we're estimating that we saved the community about 3.3 million gallons water. Um, management of natural vegetation. Uh, this year we, uh, environmental service staff, uh, did, uh, did some 
prescription burns, um, some seeding, some um, buckthorn removal, and managed a little over uh, 117 acres within the community. Um, for MS4 permitting, uh, these are the numbers that we uh, are going to be reporting to the state. So we didn't meet our goal of inspections of Pond and All Falls 389. That's about 20% of our, our inventory. And then um, sump inspections as well, and cleaning out about 128 sumps as well. So a lot of work that was done there. And this is kind of a group effort between streets, uh, utilities, and some contract work as well. Um, waste reduction and recycling. Uh, we had a uh, very successful recycling um, program that took place this fall. Uh, pumpkin composting, just want to highlight that, 48,000 pounds of, compo or of pump pumpkins that were uh, comp or recycled, composted, that don't go into the landfills. So that is about double that we had in 2022. Wow. Um, a lot of shoe re recycling took place too, <coughs> and the community really um, threw away a lot of uh, high, um, holiday lights as well too. So that was, I think, about 50% uh, more than it was the year before as well. So a lot of recycling, uh, and these have been really embraced by the community um, a lot. So moving on to the forestry division, uh, we're still in the thick of it for uh, emerald ash borer. Uh, we did have about 73 trees on uh, the right of ways that are marked for removal by streets crews yet uh, this year. Uh, we got about 100, uh, another 134 trees for, uh, that are in parks and natural areas that have to be removed by our staff as well and the contractors. Um, and right now the forestry staff is um, starting their survey for private property ash uh, inspections as well, too. So getting those notices out to the property owners. Um, we did have a, a lot of oak wilt um, in, in the community. This is going to be attributed to the drier summer that we had as well. So we had to remove a bunch of trees, oaks in our, our natural areas and parks this year. And uh, we did have a bunch of, uh, a lot of property owners that were questioning their, the health of their oak trees, so we helped them inspect those trees and try to um, address some of their concerns and questions. And then our uh, forestry grant, this is our last grant that we have with the DNR. Um, uh, we have a little bit of money left for that, pro uh, for that from that grant, so we're still removing some ash trees um, and replacing those trees in our natural areas, and then also planting some trees um, next summer with our, in some of our parks and natural areas as well. Too, so. And then additional uh, information from the forestry department, uh, we did uh, renew our application for Tree City USA in December, and we have ordered our, our trees now for our Arbor Day um, tree sales that takes place in April, um, and um, residents can start ordering those trees and shrubs um, online in, starting in February. And with that, that's my update for Public Works for fourth quarter of 2023. And I stand if you have any questions. Okay, very good. Any questions, Council? Okay. Appreciate the update. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Okay, now with the same uh, series of retirements, <laughs> turn it over to Mr. Miller to recognize our planning director. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Tonight is a, a bittersweet night. Uh, Daryl Morey, our planning director, uh, this is his last council meeting. And so I have some numbers here just to give you the scale of the impact that, that Daryl has had on the city of Lakeville. 35 years alone, that's the number of years as he's worked here at the city of Lakeville. That, that is, if I were to give you one number alone, that is enough, right? But it gets better. He's had six job titles with the city of Lakeville. <laughs> community Development Director, Assistant Community and Economic Development Director, City Planner, Acting Community and Economic Development Director, Director of Planning and Planning Director. He's had plan ten, 10 planning staff, including John Hennon, and, and he turned out okay. Um, <laughs> he has worked with 27 mayors and city council members, um, 53 planning commissioners. This next one, I don't think is official, it's just when I came up with, I think he's gone through 100 boxes of colored pencils. <laughs> um, before we had fancy maps and everything, he would always come up here with colored maps that um, would show, and um, I'm sure he wore those down to the nub. 641 planning commission meetings attended. That's probably still on the light side because that does not include any open houses, 
any joint meetings with city councils, any neighborhood meetings, anything like that. 675 plats have been approved since Daryl Morey has been in charge of the planning department. So by my rough math, that means you probably have better than two to one odds that if you live or work in Lakeville right now, it happened due to a plat or due to a development that came through while Daryl was here working for the city of Lakeville. And that is also a population of about 23,800 people to our estimated 74,000 people now. So that gives you a scale of the impact that Daryl Morey has had on the city of Lakeville. Um, I'll just kind of wrap up with this. When I, was, when I was researching the job to come here as city administrator, I contacted Roger Knudsen. Roger was our longtime city attorney who I knew through some other jobs and I just wanted to get his perspective on the job. And the first and really the only thing he said was that the city of Lakeville has the best planning department that he's ever worked with. And specifically, he called out Daryl Morey. And that's coming a lot, that's a lot coming from Roger, who had been in a lot of cities. He had seen a lot of development, a lot of planning. So, um, and I would totally agree after working here with Daryl and, and his team. So, um, Daryl, on behalf of four city administrators, <laughs> uh, 27 mayors and council members, and 53 planning commissioners, thank you and congratulations. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, I've told folks that I'm really uncomfortable talking about me. Uh, <laughs> I can stand up here and I have so many times before in front of you and talk about specific development projects, development in general in the city, but talking about me, that's something different. Former uh, Mayor Doug Anderson told me a couple weeks ago, you know, write down some notes if you're gonna do a speech. I wrote down some notes and I'm going to deviate from them right off the bat <laughs> because, because I have an opportunity here. I still have a few more days left. I have an opportunity to, to impart some history. And uh, today, uh, my first, our first and my first city administrator stopped by, Pat McGarvey. Mm -hmm. Pat hired me uh, back in 1988. And uh, he stopped in to tell me, unfortunately, he wouldn't be able to make my retirement party next week, but he did want to come in and say hi and chat with me for a little bit. And I learned something new from Pat that I'd like to share with you. And I apologize, Chris, I'm going to be talking longer than I, than I told you I was going to talk. But uh, when I started, we were downtown in what the coffee shop now, and I was up on the second floor and they just kind of stuck me in the corner because they didn't know where else to put me and downtown City Hall was busting at the seams. But at the time, plans were in place for building the City Hall here on this property. Pat McGarvey had bought the land for it. Uh, he knew it was a bit of a risk because it was not considered downtown because it was on the other side of 50 from what was considered downtown. But he took, took that risk, still close to downtown, and he told me today, and I did not know this, when the original plans for City Hall that we're sitting in were prepared, they did not have the council chambers located where they are now. And Pat told me, he said, the council chambers are for the people. This is where the citizens come to connect with the planning commission and the city council. It should be prominent right at the front entry to the city and right at facing that intersection of Holyoke and County Road 50. Mm -hmm. And so he had the plans changed to pull, basically pull these wings out and put the council chambers right here up front. That's, that's something I learned new today and I thought that was something that was worth passing on. And especially if you knew where the old council chambers were in public works building down in the industrial park, were really tiny, really small, Back when smoking was allowed indoors, it was, it was quite the treat. And my wife, Kelly, was attended one of those meetings so she can verify what I say there. So uh, 35 years has gone by in the blink of an eye. I mean, super fast. Sorry. Kelly and I moved to Lakeville 33 years ago. 
uh, started a family. We got married, started a family, raised three kids here. They all went to and graduated from Lakeville North High School. So they've gone on and they got their own jobs. They're living in their own places and they're very successful. We've really, really enjoyed enjoyed our time here. I really have. The staff at City Hall are, are awesome. I really, really appreciate the support of the City Council and the Planning Commission. If I didn't have that support, I would not have stayed here 35 years. But you guys have been great, your predecessors, all those folks on the wall over there and over there, of which I worked with most of those people, have, have been very supportive and really good to work with. You've, you've made it a lot easier. But what I really want to do is I want to thank my staff, the planning staff, as, and thanks to Justin for your, your story. We, we do have a great planning staff, and I really would like to especially call out my longtime associate planners, Frank Dempsey and Chris Jensen. Chris is here today because they are the backbone of this department, and without them, the department is not the same. And then, of course, my wife, Kelly, for taking care of the household and the kids during all those night meetings and hours that I was at night meetings, she had to take care of things, so I really appreciate that. So thank you very much. Thank you. I've enjoyed my time here. Really appreciate it. I'll just say, Daryl, um, you know, I have been able to work with you for the past seven years, and you have taught me uh, a lot. I didn't know literally anything about planning before coming onto the council. Um, and I'll just never forget, I think it was my first or second year on the council, and some teacher had asked us a geography to come over, and you had no problem sitting with high school students for four hours with me and talking about planning. I don't think they <laughs> knew what we were talking about, but it was a fun experience. And actually, I learned a lot in those four hours, and I, and I won't forget it. So I just want to extend my gratitude to you for your many, many years of service to our community and look forward to your party next week. Thanks. <laughs> Um, moving on to item six, our consent agenda. Any items to highlight, Mr. Miller? Well, there's no more retirements. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a couple, though. Um, item 6D is the designation of our legal newspaper for 2024. This is an annual item, and we are once again designating the, the Sun this week as the paper for all of our publication, legal publications. And then item 6K is a resolution accepting donations to the Parks and Recreation Department in third and fourth quarters, and we are appreciative of those donations. Very good, thank you. Um, council, any items that you needed, wanted to discuss further? If not, I'll take a motion. Uh, I move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Consent agenda passes. We'll move on to uh, action items, nothing, unfinished business, nothing, new business, appointment of acting mayor for 2024. And this is a person from on the council who would step in and run meetings of, in my absence or attend certain events. And so we'll take a um, nomination for acting mayor for 2024. Um, I would like to make a nomination, and I'd like to nominate Joshua Lee for acting mayor for 2024. Okay. Joshua, do you accept a nomination? I do. Okay. Any other nominations? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor of appointing? Oh. Second. Uh, I guess, yes. Is there a second? <laughs> I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Second the nomination. Thank you. Any other nominations? Okay. All those in favor of appointing Joshua, acting mayor for 2024, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and with that, an, uh, announcements. Next regular meeting is Tuesday, January 16th here. Our next work session is Monday, January 22nd at our water treatment, which is on the corner of 105th and Ipava Avenue. And with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Indeed.